Today's haul includes a miniature made by the founding member of IGMA, my favorite desk and chair, the first miniature I ever made, and I'll tell you how I got a lot of these minis. If you have any information about any of the pieces I show, please share it in the comments. Up first, I have the only small scale item in the haul. This is a half scale laundry basket. I don't know who made it, but I have seen at least one other one with different fabrics and different items of clothing. I really love the small scale patterns in this basket and the button down shirt. This is a really well made wicker rocking chair. A lot of dollhouse wicker is made out of wire or waxed thread, but this is made of real wicker with wooden legs. It's not signed, but it has the original $50 price tag on it and a really cool quilted seat. The wicker has discolored, but no damage. Here's another miniature that would be right at home on your porch. It's a hanging macrame planter. Apparently macrame was a big trend in the 70s and it's making a comeback. Speaking of making things, if you want to make this yourself, it's just a wooden bead filled with a plastic plant and some knotted string. I would really love to make something like this, so I think I'll give it a try someday. In honor of summer, I have two beach-themed shadow boxes filled with little tiny sea creatures and seashells. This is the simpler of the two, and it has a bigger seahorse than the other one. I'm not sure if the blue seashell is natural or painted, but these types of shadow boxes open on the top so you can fill them with whatever you would like to display. I couldn't get it open. I really love this shadow box that has like a black velvet type of background and it's a really good contrast for the absolutely teeny tiny shells and the minuscule seahorse inside of it. I live about an hour from the beach, so the next time I go, I will be looking through handfuls of sand to try to find a tiny starfish or little tiny shells to display. This is another item you could technically make, but I am not great shakes at making doll clothing. It's a small, poseable doll. Its body is made with folded over wire, and he looks like he has a broken ankle, so I'll just fix that real quick. I'm not sure who made this and if he's intended to be a 112 scale toy or if he is a half scale boy, but either way, I think he's made very well and I love all of the little details. This is also unmarked and I don't know who made it, but it is a beautiful handmade pitcher and I have another one as well that has even more detail. I really love the scalloped edge on this one and all of the beautiful hand painting, as well as the fluted bottom that looks kind of like a pumpkin. They're pretty large for 112 scale because they're one and three quarter inches tall. This is a really big, beautifully colored rug. It is nine by 12 inches, which is an absolutely huge rug. In our full size world, we usually have like 5 by 7 rugs or 8 by 10 so this is a big one. Here I have a little baggie of southwestern style decor. This is really unique and I love it. It is a piece of suede that looks like a plate and it has a hand painted lizard on it. It's signed BJ1995. Here's a little footed trinket bowl or something and it has this cool pattern inside of it. It is not signed, has a little bit of chipping around the very thin edge, but it's very nice. This little piece of pottery looks like it was made on a potter's wheel, and it has this really cool gradation in the glaze. I have made a lot of miniatures, but I have never made pottery, so I think I would like to try it someday, but I don't think I'll invest in a wheel. These are just pewter minis that are painted. They're very heavy because they're made out of metal. The simple decor. We've got a vase and a boot. Here's the little puddle mop and rusty bucket of water I made in a previous tutorial video. I used a little UV resin to spice up this mass-produced mop. This bucket was made by an unknown to me artisan and I added some water and also a ton of rust. I'll link the video in the description. 
These are miniatures that were never displayed or used. They are not marked, but they're made by Rose's Dollhouse, and I know that because I found them in the original box they shipped in. This bathroom set looks, I don't know, maybe 1980s, I'm not really sure. I got this bathroom set and a lot of my other miniatures and a lot of 13 large boxes of dollhouse miniatures. A woman in Massachusetts discovered them in a closet from her aunt and nobody knew they were in there. I found the listing on Craigslist and it was super exciting and it was such a fun find. It makes you wonder how many collections are hidden from sight. But back to this tub, it is super heavy and it has this pretty pink and purple glaze. I love the little indent where you can put a bar of soap. And the pedestal sink is very nice as well. Here I have a little pitcher that's made out of soldered metal. I actually have two of these and they're not marked so I don't know what they're made out of. I like to think that they're made out of sterling silver. I think the pitchers were constructed from four or five different pieces and the solder joints were sanded smooth. If I made my own dollhouse it would have an eclectic mix of miniatures and I think this would have to be one of them. Up next I have this beautiful fireplace made by Fantastic Merchandise. You can identify it as Fantastic Merchandise because of this faux wood paper and the excellent construction. All of the joints are nice and tight. Fantastic Merchandise eventually became Vespok, which is no longer making miniatures. So take extra good care of your Fantastic M and Vespok pieces. I'm not really sure what style this is, but I think it's Federal or Empire. And that's my camera reflected in the mirror. Here is a simple little step stool that's kind of like a shaker, Quaker style, very primitive. It has a little half moon shape cut out of the middle so you can put your hand in it and just carry the step stool away. And here's a close up of this super simple piece if you would like to make your own out of popsicle sticks. This is one of my favorite pieces of pottery because I absolutely love the crackle glaze on it. I don't know what a piece like this is intended for, but I think I would use it as a planter and maybe put some succulents in it. Today's video is really making me want my own dollhouse to decorate. This piece is so special. It was made by Franklin Morley, who is one of the charter members of the International Guild of Miniature Artisans. It has a little white glass knob and this amazing punched tin in the door, which is so charming. This miniature cabinet was made with full-size cabinet techniques. If I turn it to the side, you can see the rabbit joint in the door, which was made of multiple pieces. And it is amazing. It's one of my favorite things. Here I have this sweet little woven basket that has three handles. If you take a look at the bottom, you can get an idea of the construction and how long this must have taken to lay out all these pieces and weave everything in and out. It's in really great shape, but it's at least 30 years old because it was found in a box of miniatures that were in the attic for decades. Here is a little birdhouse, which is meant as decor inside of the house, and it's actually made entirely out of paper and a couple pieces of wire. I like miniatures like this where you can see how they were constructed and possibly recreate it yourself at home. It is not signed, so I don't know who made it. Here is a beautiful piece of art that has never been displayed. It is signed KW, and I really love the stylistic approach to painting this unicorn. It's meant to look like it's on slate, but I'm really not sure what material it is. I actually have another one of these and was made by the same artisan. I love the fantasy element and whimsy of these two pieces of art. I would love to use these in a project of some sort, but I'm not sure what, so if you have any ideas of how I could use these, let me know in the comments below. Here's a great example of using something that isn't actually miniature, but works really well in a miniature environment. 
This is a leather tube that has this nice sewing and it is stamped made in France on the bottom. I believe this might be from a vintage perfume bottle, but it could be used in a miniature space as an umbrella stand. I feel like miniaturists are the epitome of being able to repurpose things. Here are some pieces I would love to know more about. I can tell it's pottery of some type, but I'm not really sure what it's made out of. It looks like they were made by stamping a design into the front and adding some black glaze. And they're each signed SL or JL on the back, I'm not really sure. They're quite thin, so I'm not sure if they're wall hangings or ornaments of some type. And they each have a hole punched at the top, but there's paper glued over the back of it. I have tried to research them, but they're just a little miniature mystery to me. I recently did an abandoned hospital scene and I really wish I had remembered that I own these miniature syringes. This is another miniature you could make yourself. These are made with an eye pin and an earring back and they're finished off with a thin tube that's tapered at the end. I'm not sure where this thin tube came from, but perhaps it's something you could find at a hobby store. But I would probably just glue some plastic around the ends. In honor of summer, I have this little pill capsule filled with these tiny yellow clay birds. These seem to be very simply made from just one chunk of clay that has a little bit of cutting in it and some painting on the surface. One of them has a tiny open beak and the other one just has a closed pointed beak. I'm not sure where I got these, but I have seen this style of bird before in multiple different colors, so I don't know if it's the same artisan making a whole bunch of them or if other people do a similar technique. I have another pill capsule and this one is filled with teeny tiny butterflies and a random wing. It seems like these butterflies are made from paper and are hand painted and I think they are so pretty and very nicely done. I have plans to redo a front porch room box and I think these would look really pretty in the garden once I complete it or start it. Here is a vintage phonograph made from multiple pieces of wood with hand painted detail. This piece would look right at home in a general store or an old fashioned parlor and it was handmade in Japan from the Shackman Company. It is vintage and it's probably from the 1980s I would guess. If I look at the horn here, I can see how this was constructed because it was two pieces of wood that were joined together and sanded. So I have a wooden golf tee and I'm kind of thinking of trying to recreate this using some of the junk I have at home. Here is the first 112 scale miniature I ever made. I accidentally gave this corgi a sad expression and I used a tiny jump ring as a collar. I made it out of clay and I didn't put any structure inside of the body like aluminum foil so when I baked it he kind of just smushed down and became even shorter. The head is about the same size as the body which is pretty standard for a corgi. I made a ton of Barbie miniatures when I was a kid but this is the first miniature I made as an adult and I think I was about 18 years old. I have moved a lot over the years so I'm so glad that I never lost this little guy. Here I have a beautiful vintage handmade pedestal table, so it's a candlestick table they call it, or a plant stand. There's a little added detail on top because the top is 8 sided, so it's an octagon. The table looks brand new, but it was actually made in December of 1985 and it is signed RPH. Since it was made in December, I wonder if maybe it was a Christmas gift for somebody. This is a vintage chair from the 1980s, and it's meant to look like wire wicker, but it's actually just made out of metal grate. I already started trying to redo this one day, but the pillow was glued in so tightly, I just kind of gave up and left it for another time, but I would like to replace the pillow someday and give it a different paint job and just generally spruce it up. 
Whenever I'm looking at miniatures, I try to think of how I would make that, but I'm not sure I could make something like this. This desk is very finely made, and it has beautiful hand-turned legs and lovely hand painting on the front. It is signed on the bottom, JS125, or I'm not really sure. It could be 521 SP. I actually measured the legs and they are all exactly the same size and the turning on the feet starts in the same spot and the top has this nice little detail with the rounded edge on each corner. And it gets even better because this beautiful desk is accompanied by an even more impressive chair. This chair is just covered in beautiful hand-painted detail and it looks like whoever made it must have owned a lathe because it's all hand-turned. No detail was overlooked when it came to finishing this chair and I really love the shape of the seat and the black painting on the back where the spindles meet the seat. The spindles on the back are very finely made and it's in perfect condition and I absolutely love it. Side note, I don't know if anyone noticed the kind of funky things going on with the lighting in this video, but it turns out my camera does not respond well to a white background, so I won't be doing that again. Please let me know what your favorite items were. For me, it's the desk and chair, the unicorn paintings, and the corgi that I made. 